is Sinead O'Reilly and I'm delighted to welcome you to the official launch of Deep Roots Poetry Exchange 2021. The Poetry Exchange merges two of the things that got me through the lockdowns of the past year, narrative for story exchange and poetry. It all started in 2020 when the writers in this anthology were brought together as part of the Edna O'Brien Young Writers Bursary organised by the Museum of Literature Ireland. By the end of the week, it was as if we'd known each other our whole lives. And when the idea of a poetry exchange formed in my head, I knew this was the group for it. To explain the idea more, I'll give a brief background on Narrative 4 and the story exchange. Narrative 4 is a global organisation driven by artists, shaped by educators and led by students. In a story exchange, their core methodology, individuals are paired together to share a story that in some way defines them. Each person retells their partner's story in the first person as if it happened to them. The poetry exchange is a story exchange with a twist. We were paired to share a personal story from the past year. Then, instead of retelling our fellow writer's story, we had a few days to connect with its essence and express it through poetry. The poems were generated in a creative burst following the exchange and in a short space of time, staying true to the essence of the story. Being loosely inspired by the past year in general, the themes explored range from everyday monotony to freedom, from depression to contrasting brightness, from memory to belonging and friendship, from money struggles to time slipping by. The exchange was a chance to both deepen the roots of our stories and to take them in a completely new direction, giving them a new viewpoint and the freedom of poetry as a form of expression. The role of the interpreter was to connect with something in the story and to channel its interpretation. This brings to mind the role of the poetry reader. What is it that brings people back to certain poems again and again, especially during such challenging times as the COVID-19 lockdowns? People connect with a poem they recognise something in it, a thought, a feeling, a landscape which mirrors their own. In this way, poetry acts as a reflection. However, there is always something more, some new glimmer or twist you hadn't noticed in the background, some new way of seeing its subject matter. The poet Mary Jean Chan, in describing poetry during difficult times, said, something about the specificity of poetry allows it to crystallise experience as if one were pausing time. This time can be returned to again and again as a pocket of experience which has been preserved. Derek Mahan's poem, Everything is Going to Be Alright, was a pocket of reassurance many people turned to during lockdown. For writers, poetry also serves as a way to gather painful experiences, to express them and to try to move on. Readers may then find solace in discovering that expression. I believe poetry has unlimited functions because everything that poetry is comes back to humanity and connection. Even if a poem is describing disconnection, there is someone out in the world who is connecting to that feeling. As we evolve, our poetry evolves to match the world we live in and our reactions to that world. This year has been an empty year of sorts. And yet this emptiness creates space for all sorts of imaginings and reimaginings. I always go back to an image from Colin McCann's book, A Paragon. The word a paragon means a shape with a countably infinite number of sides. Stories are shapes with an infinite number of sides. And the poems in this anthology convey that prismic view of stories. I hope you enjoy hearing the readings of the poems you're about to hear. And I hope that this anthology both conveys the stories we've written about and inspires those yet to happen. Hi, my name's Amy Cahill. I'm an 18 year old aspiring writer from Wexford. Um, I tend to only write short stories, so this is actually my first ever poem. So this is the truth. I can only ever tell the truth in the dark. Honesty is far too crude for some light. People hang me up questions in the day. I cannot answer them. Perched on the edge of conversation, words hang unspoken like wet mould in my mouth. 
At night, my mother stumbles into my room, searching for who I really am. In a half dream, I murmur to her, the truth. Emotions pull and ripple at her face, but I cannot see them. For a moment, the moon stares at me. I've probably said too much. A Home of One's Own by Ava Dolan Under honeyed skies of newborn spring, occluded by the rising fog of steam, rooted we sat on upturned edges, frayed blue against emerald. I broke into a sprint through cold grey water, mirroring the clouds' careful gestures. I watched them from my vantage, cross-legged and overlapping, their hush chanting anchor to the breeze. Between them awaited a hollow, just wide enough for me. Remember when you could objectify the shop boy because he wasn't wearing a mask and wait in line for hours to walk away with an envelope which contained concerts? When there was leisure, work and home, all pushed apart, separated like a five rolls dinner. There are new normals now, which is the strangest thing. No more Saturday morning glange after Friday night shifts or trailing fingers across pianos and train stations. No more sleepovers inside, close with full eye contact. No more can I borrow that. And for now, no more backseat daydreams on the drive to Limerick. The list goes on and really it isn't too bad. Things could be so much worse, but I can't help missing the future of the past. On those drives, my mind was in UCD, 3,000 euros plus rent, the price of freedom and independence, the yappy roommate who jogged, girlfriends and boyfriends, borrowing notes, last minute taxis to Cypress Avenue, scrounging for rent, 4am calming in the library, dodgy takeaways, the first time I'd raised my hand in a lecture, all ahead, but now on pause. Maybe it's selfish, but I really liked how things would have been. Hi, I'm Sinead O'Reilly, and this is my poem, Found. If you feel lost, go to the woods. Wood remembers, quietly crackles in sun-flashed signals through trunks, then darkness again. It was a bad day. That's why I was there. Why I didn't want to see anyone else. Why I went to turn back when I saw the old man hunched by the tree. I skirted past, eyes fixed on pine needles and root gnarled earth. He looked up, said, I'm lost. His face seemed kind. Wrinkles mapped his eyes. His hands shook at the ends of his arms as if they didn't belong. We found his wife at the forest's edge, searching like last week and the week before, she told me. He's lived a life of roots, she said, that slowly disconnected, his mind a hive abandoned by its bees. But when he sees her, his face slowly lights in recognition, like honey held to the sun. Thank you. My name's Daniel Madden. I'm from County Monaghan, and today I will be reading my poem, which I wrote for this very exciting project titled Nonsensical Fragments. Loops. Disconnected. Our life entrenched in a drudgery. To the waterfront, the main street, and back again. Over and over I trudge. When did you last do something for the first time? When was it a real something? I couldn't recall. I found myself at the beach. On hard sand built up in dunes, I wrestled on my togs, keeping my eye towards mosaic of biting blues. 100% numb and yet present. The soft waves engulfed as the cold emboldened into the path of the sun I dove or splashed or flailed. I emerged and horses ran past, affected not by the flow and ebb of tide nor the billowing breeze, 
freedom in its glory along the shore. Until I returned to the main street, the waterfront, connectivity in its modesty within the store, tied to it the obscenities of life before, those mistakes and unbridled attachments, all of the nonsensical fragments. Thank you. Homeland Paradise. How broad was the smile of the wind as it combed your hair? How fair is our sun-deprived skin, life-deprived, be nature's friend again? What myth described a free mare's flowing mane, and same crashing waves and peaceful caves that saved us, lay in motion, motivating living? The singing bird that we once heard, absurd words authority murmured to force a tazagoraphobia adaptation, and neutralise initiations to find lost freedom. Wisdom generalised by internally captivated insights, and music no longer an adventure soundtrack, but relief from being bound back by chains a blissful rain cannot rust. Who to trust when life save lives in return for youth's desperate cries, and the world's strongest animals lay within our restrained minds, although detainment finds a calming drug to get us by, as we try forget our internal longing, but to now forget our homeland paradise without regret, its memory we cannot bear. The more we remember, the more we wish for, as that's the only freedom we all share. I've been lost, but I've been looking, and I've seen all these days and days. I was a tightly wound coil until I was a snapping thread. I was a word and I couldn't say it. I was a hand reaching out for another hand, but I couldn't catch it, so I just cut it off. My head was filled with well-loved metaphors of roiling sea. I drowned in it. I wrecked things to feel them and now I've hit because things wrecked me first. I've been torn down to nothing. I've burned so fucking bright. And now I hold something so fragile in my hand and I made it, I built it. And I might be lost, but I might be found a little. Hi, my name is Sean Machingore. I am a writer for the 2021 Poetry Exchange, and this is my poem, Crown of Flowers. Enjoy. The world felt dark. The two-month depression that consumes me breaks me down into pieces. The thoughts of little capsules entering my system. In the mental anguish of this lockdown, my smile decreases. The world feels brighter today. The smell of dandelions and other picked flowers makes my smile so wide. The sun and my crown creates a beautifully immaculate vibe. Thank you. What shall we write? Not enough, I suppose. Perhaps about shadow drunken dragons of old, or maybe a blossom cordially baked in the breeze. Just that what lies before you is seldom all it seems. Do they die in the end? Well, of course they do. Whether that is their story is up to you. Suppose it's the same for us. The meaning of life is death, but the meaning of your life is for you to interpret. Where shall we start? At the beginning to our maze. An ethereality of chess and masquerades. And how shall it go? Only one way to find out. The mumbles through rain, ice and smoke seem to shout. But what of my purpose? Or what of my dreams, the valleys and alleys of tearholic screams? Did you know butterflies only flutter by for a day? Does it frighten you, knowing all this could soon fade away? Listen to the echo, can you hear my call? Are you really scared of heights, or just afraid to fall? Are you really scared to fall, or not be able to get back up? Since we're all addicted to pain, what's to say we aren't in love? I do not fear the dark. Only what dwells amongst its whispers. The fire is light, the fire is warmth, and yet one spark could send me to cinders. Do you fear the calling, or do you fear the echo? You'll never know if you don't try at all. It's come and go. Down a peg. I'll throw half my rent away on Ticketmaster to stand ten feet closer to a girl belting about lesbianism. 
And then the guilt hits. Not over the lesbianism, don't you worry. That guilt soaks like a tar till satisfied I've scraped the funds to pay back what I now owe the feeling. You eventually filter out the substance of rejections. Control F, yes, no. Christ's sake, only a handful of the decency to block your address. Instead of drafting up pleasantries, why, you're strapped to draft your own. Fifty CVs filter into spam folders before a greengrocer takes pity on broke youth. Wish I could say it was easy pickings, but I ain't done. Guilt isn't happy with sweet berries. It craves the cold hard cash. Hi, my name is Cleveland McCarthy, I'm from East Cork, and this is Prologue. These have been the years the sun burned green and there was no grass this side of anywhere. Anger festered across the high water while in my city normality thinned out and, like lice, crawled the cruel gals from rot underfoot. At sixteen I am old enough to see them, shadowless on the corner of Gate Cinema. Toenailed boots, viking eyes, pupils stained red with apathy. Sixteen years doesn't feel like it should anymore. All this freedom is wasted on blue light screens in a city I love but could leave in two years. Nothing to do but call a friend, hold their familiar caller ID like an amulet. Here in a footnote of femininity, a violence sits and permeates the whole house with smoke that sinks into the lungs. It's a disease spread on the backs of European rats caught even in the classroom. Forevermore it shall be until it isn't.